when you have tried a number of the international relations textbooks, as Jim and I both have done, and Cooper has done as well, a lot of them are very good at certain things. Um, they may be very good at description, or they may very, be very good at uh, high-level theorizing. Uh, but very often they're written by people who are in doctoral programs who haven't taught the class probably in, in a long time. And Jim and I teach this class every year and have for a long time. And we are routinely accustomed, as the bulk of our job absolutely is teaching undergraduates. And so we wanted, and I'm following up on Jim's point, we wanted a book that could tell them how to figure out what's going on in the world, but more importantly, why those things are going on in the world, and not to be scared when someone mentions the idea of a theory that can help explain that, like that's some esoteric, exotic idea, and, and find some way to cover both of those in ways that engage the students that we actually teach. Yeah, if I could just add something really quick to that as well, following up on what Ralph just said, and I really, I really appreciate the contrast between others that teach it in that. One of the things that I've experienced, and I, and I think this is true for, for Ralph and for Cooper, uh, I think it was reflected in our conversations about approaching this book, is so the, the, the thick, full-size versions of IR textbooks tend to be kind of dense. And the thin, slim brief versions tend to be, um, I don't know, un, un, uninspired, un, unengaging. They, they tend to be too superficial or shallow, right. especially on the explanatory side. They tend to focus on just the basic descriptions and, and key concepts. And what we sought to do was to find a place where we could have a full-size, full-semester textbook, but to write it in a way that was more engaging and 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 nimble than some of the existing uh, he heavy full-size textbooks. So that I think con uh, contributes directly to what, what I think we all share uh, as a sense of, of what makes our book particularly effective is that it's really accessible and really engaging with the students. Uh, it's written in a conversational way yeah. that draws the students into a discussion, right? Yeah. Ralph and Cooper and I liberally spread uh, throughout the writing and the narrative of the text questions and comments to the students that, that ask them to pause for a moment on that paragraph or on that section and, and think, what about this? Now, what would that mean in this situation? And I think that that just, it, it makes the students read differently more purposefully and we all know that if the students won't read it it doesn't matter what's in it and so that was our our, our first checklist point when we were writing was <laughs> we got to write this in a way that brings as many students into the to the dialogue as we can yeah uh, i think that the the structure of the book is exactly as Ralph has, has characterized it. There's a cumulative element to this book where it's almost like peeling away layers, I don't know, of an onion or a peanut buster parfait or whatever <laughs> it is that you want to, because not everybody likes onions, as uh, like onions. Sh Shrek yeah. tells us that. But, uh, right, so, so students are, are introduced to some basic ideas early, and then the depth and extension and broadening of those ideas occurs chapter by chapter, over and over again. So, so what does it mean to be secure? And then that gets expanded on as chapters un unveil the, the national and international security elements, the war and peace stuff, and, and the wealth and prosperity elements, and then the human elements of, of how we live with each other and in an environment that's in, increasingly threatened. Uh, so there's a there's a kind of a, I don't know, a climbing wall element to, to this text, right? So there are handholds for the students, and as they reach for each handhold, they find themselves further and further up this wall, and, and it improves their ability to see the connections and to make sense of things, uh, uh, and I think that's distinctive. Uh, I think that's really distinctive. I, I think the second thing that I would add is we have made the very conscious effort to lay into each chapter 
a cluster of, of critical and analytical thinking moments, not just buried in the text and the dialogue. Of course, there's yeah. that. But these, these theory and action boxes, the revenge of geography boxes, the foreign policy and perspective boxes, and then the uh, think about this box at the end of each chapter, they, they place students in the position of addressing a puzzle or a problem, of making sense of, of how or why something happens or what the effect of A is on B and then what the implications might be for what we do and how we do it in the world. And I think that, as Ralph very aptly put, um, demystifies the theory element. Because theory is nothing other than a wrench or a hammer or a screwdriver, a tool to try and make sense, to simplify things, because world politics is complicated. Yeah. So let's simplify it down to some moving parts that we can then connect up and understand the cause and effect relations. And, and, and I think that's distinctive as well. Uh, my experience, Ralph could comment on this mm -hmm. too, my experience with other books is there's always theory in those books, but there's often... Not always, but often there's a theory chapter or two yeah. that just buries the students in the what's rational choice uh, kind of summaries. And then you never really see that stuff ever again in the rest of the book. Uh, we've tried not to do that. Uh, one is I, I, I think... And I think if the sales reps look at the book, just flip it open and read any any given page in, in any chapter, they will be struck by the the engaging approach uh, in the conversational style. And that's something that I think the, that any instructor would really appreciate. We've had great feedback from all of the people that use the book uh, up till now from uh, reviewers about that particular approach. But the second thing that I would say, and this is a little different than some of the other things we've, we've em emphasized, is I like to think about where this book is situated as an introduction to world politics book, where it's situated on what uh, our colleagues uh, occasionally call the sort of a ladder of abstraction, right? From, from the lowest rung being able to simply describe things to the very high order abstractions at the top of that ladder. And I, I think that our text is situated at exactly the sweet spot on that ladder. It's, it's far enough down that ladder that it's timely and relevant and current, and it engages students in the things that are happening now in the world. But it's up several rungs because it doesn't, it doesn't allow them simply to rest on the and then and then and then yeah. elements of, of world politics. It asks them to think about how and why, and to what ends, right? And it makes them do that without being intimidating, without being punitive. Uh, it does it in a in a step-by-step -step cumulative fashion across the, uh, the course. And I like to tell my students that when they turn in their last assignments, they get to that last chapter, we're done with the class. I asked them to think about how far into being theorists of international relations they have come over 16 weeks, because it's usually a really great trajectory.